All right, quick update here. It's uh, Tuesday night actually, and uh, we're able to get the uh, all the yard trackage in. Um, don't have all the tortoises in yet. Just started doing that. Took a little bit longer than I expected. And uh, uh oh, since we have a little bullet train coming by here. So we got. Uh, I said all the yard tracks in um, over the weekend. I actually, the previous weekend, made about 12 turnouts or whatever I said. I forget the large number of them, but uh, these tracks are in here in the back. Um, again, not totally sure what we're going to do right now. It's just kind of storage uh, for stuff. And we did get the, the rest of the yard in. So now we can kind of park things uh, in the intermodal yard, which was in and now on the other side as well. So all these fast track switches are in. This is the one we had to cut a little bit close. Uh, cut it in here a little bit to, to match them up. But that's the nice thing about the when you're building turnouts, you can kind of do some custom track work as needed. So that end's all done there. And then we got, like I said, the rest of this done. Tortoises are starting to go in. Um, I do have a couple of them in. Just... Uh, We'll get there. This one's actually installed. Uh, none of them are wired up yet, uh, but we did get them in. Here's the crew working. Yeah, there's uh, Foreman McLovin. He's up here checking things out again. Um, so this is, again, the ladder from this side. All finished up. So that's the, the yard. Came out all right. Came out pretty good. It's, I mean, the, the tracks aren't quite as uh, laser straight as I'd like them to be, but uh, they are, they're all in at least, and uh, now once we get the tortoises in, a big chunk will be uh, completed here. And we actually have the diesel facility done, and uh, got the, right now this is, uh, we'll show you in a minute here why we <laughs> did what we did with some of the switches, but uh, that's all in there, so now we can store engines on the layout, and uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, Turn on the the, uh, the tracks here, and you'll see why we did what we did. One second here. Okay, so there you go. I turned the tracks on. You know, every freaking diesel in there is working, so it's uh, can't even hear yourself think. So that's why we actually went ahead and did this, so that uh, you know that would, that's annoying. I mean, to be honest, that would be. Uh, Really get on your nerves after a while, so we uh, so with those off, it makes the things a lot quieter. So when there things are, that's when you, when you turn the layout on. I, I didn't want uh, all those sound engines all come on at one time. So so that's that. Now uh, we got to progress. Did we make any mistakes or have issues? Yeah, we did. Um, Mostly, for some reason, um, this particular tortoise uh, did not line up. Or I think because you see I added a little bit here to line things up. That threw this tortoise this way. And if I show things underneath, pardon the, uh, the maneuver here. I don't know how well this will show up, but this darn tortoise is really really tight it moved way too close to to this so it's supposed to be back a ways uh, but I was able to <laughs> gouge out the the wood there with a Dremel tool got a lot of Dremel tools and uh, I got it in there and uh, I threw it by hand I don't have it wired up yet like I said I have the wires here and I'm gonna wire it up uh, to the back of the cabinet here that's this is where all these uh, switches will now come in run all the wires back and I have that one uh, installed. I'm actually going to try, I want to see if I can solder underneath the layout. That's probably going to be fun, but I think I'll be able to do it. Uh, what I'm actually thinking of doing, uh, being the rebel that I am, is maybe on some of these just bringing the multi-conductor cable right out and just soldering it on here. I know most of the time we uh, always hear that, no you can't do that, you got to go to a terminal board, but in all honesty, I've never had a tortoise go bad, so I might roll the dice and try that. So, 
So that's where we are. Uh, like I said the next steps are getting all the tortoises in and worked up and wired up and making sure everything works. And then uh, the next big thing we got to do in terms of track to really finish things up will be get the the crossovers here in Pittsfield. Uh, there's a left and a right, and then the turnout that's going to come into the factory. Uh, although I actually have it built up there. Um, and then get this one, which I actually have built. And in fact, I'm working on the video to show, I wouldn't call it a how-to, but just some, some of the things I've done, what I've learned in, in uh, doing the, <clears throat> the fast tracks turnouts. And, and I might try to do one, maybe a little bit more detail of the actual, of the crossover. I don't think I've seen that anywhere on YouTube or anything. So when I get that done, then pretty much, uh, it's going to get this track in so there's some more storage available. Uh, I'm not going to worry so much about the factory. Again, you can see it's still storing all kinds of stuff here. But uh, we'll get to that. Alright, one other issue that we had besides the one tortoise. Um, this particular turnout, which had, which had been there for a while, uh, I actually had... I didn't have the gap in this here. I had these ties backwards. Um, this one can be solid because it's all inside the frog. This one needs to have a gap right in here between these two. Uh, and I didn't. Now, it was an issue before because there was nothing connected to it. So even though there was a short there, since that was not connected, it wouldn't have been a problem. But I was looking at this um, before I turned the power on and said, uh oh, that, that'll be a problem. So I was able to get in there and, and get the gap cut into it. So, again, very, very important. Um, and that's in terms of testing, kind of what I did was um, I started down here, I installed the, the diesel area and what we have is we have, uh, you know, double gaps on each of these um, so they can be turned off with the switches. And then so I got those wired up into the bus, uh, you know, turned the layout on, verified there's voltage um, and that the switches worked. And then as I kind of worked from this side, you know, up that up that way, as I got the feeders in, I would turn the layout on. And, you know, the first thing I wanted to check was coming across the double gap, make sure it didn't have polarities backwards. <clears throat> so I did that. And then there's also, there's a, there's a power district gap right here. Um, basically all of Eugene Yard is one power district. And then the engine facility and Pittsfield, around here is another power district you know since so this is really going to be pretty much just main line and the transformer factory not a whole lot of load so I decided to make the engine terminal its own basically its own power district just because of the you know the power hog and engines tended that we're going to accumulate there so and then I want to test you know coming across this so as I got done I kind of worked down that way if there was a problem I didn't want to have the entire thing done and have to try to troubleshoot, so I kind of did it in sections. So, did this first, verified it worked, verified there's no polarity problems here, verified there's no polarity issues across the the um, the, the booster section break there, uh, and then as I went down through here and got the various feeders in, I would turn the power on, make sure that there was no uh, shorts or anything like that. So more more to make sure I didn't have a uh, a feeder you know wired backwards so there's a polarity problem and then same thing up you know this end I would as I went through here there's no real power gaps or anything up here just normal what you need for DCC but uh, just wanted to kind of do it sequentially so if there was an issue um, I wasn't having to troubleshoot the entire area I knew you know I was good up to you know the diesel, the diesel facility was good uh, the power gap was good halfway up the yard is good up to here is good, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, just so I knew it had an issue, it makes troubleshooting a lot, uh, a lot simpler. So, other than that, everything went uh, relatively well, um, and now it's just a matter of getting the tortoises in. All right, it's real quick. Got a little bit more done. Actually, uh, it's now Thursday evening. Steve didn't post anything yet because he uh, got called into work and had some tests in school and whatnot. So, you know how life gets in the way of things sometimes. But um, so I did get all the switch machines. At this end, at the Eugene West end, are in. All the uh, tortoises are mounted. Uh, they're actually all hooked up, wired in. I actually did solder. I might be able to tell it because it's not really a good view here. Uh, but I did solder that one. It worked okay. Uh, not the greatest, but uh, 
I was able to get it, and it was a real short run, so I just uh, stripped the wires and ran, ran it over and ran it right down to the to the cabinet. So that worked okay. Uh, the other ones I did, I did go to terminal blocks, uh, so they're all in and they're all. Uh, like I said, hook up the terminal blocks. Now I just gotta run the main cables. I have all the cables are cut here, the multi-conductor cable. So they're ready to go. So that's probably gonna be tomorrow evening. Get those all done. Um, and this is the one that's in completely right now, but uh, so more to come with that. Uh, Steve they get a nice big intermodal train out. Now they <laughs> had some fun. We also did get uh, one additional three banger here. The, that little pacer three car set and some new uh, some new uh, containers there as well just for fun so uh, getting a nice little nice little intermodal train here so uh, more to come as we work on uh, other items <laughs>